Hi, everybody. Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet. Today we are going to be talking about what works for you, social media and the job search. Before we get started, I'm going to pull out a polling question here, and if you can let me know right now what kind of tools you are using, I would appreciate that, and that will give us a little frame of reference. So it looks like the majority of the people that have answered so far are using LinkedIn, which is what I would expect. And it does look like there are a few people that are using some of the other tools. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to hide this poll now. Let's get started with our presentation. We're going to be talking about social media. And one of the things that is really important is knowing how important social media is. So we have this uh, video here from Eric Qualman. There is a link on the PDF, so if you download the handout, you can watch this again in the future. But what I'm going to do right now is pull the actual video over so that you can see it. Now there is music in the background that will not, you will not hear if you are on the phone call. So if you want to turn on your computer speakers, um, you can hear it. Uh, otherwise you can watch it at a later point in time. So let's go with the video right now.
to Eric Qualman, who has put together this video over a period of time. It's, it's very amazing how much social media has really come into our universe, and it's, it's just great. Um, I actually used this video when I guest lecture at a master's program class at a local college here, and they're all amazed as well, and they're in a master's degree marketing class, so it just is amazing. So why do we want to use social media? Um, we want to be able to build awareness about our brand, and as a job seeker, you become your own personal brand. You want to be able to provide thought leadership. Um, it's what a business would do when they're using uh, social media to build their brand. We also want to be able to generate contacts and leads. And in, in a job seeker's case, that is recruiters or people who would be hiring you. And then you want to provide customer support or advocacy. Your advocacy in your job search is you. What platforms are best for you to find jobs? In most cases, it's going to be LinkedIn, build, using a blog, and we're going to talk about all of these items. Facebook can be used, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. We have many videos on each of these platforms that we have on our YouTube channel, and if uh, Chelsea or Lacey or Natasha could put that link to our playlist up, that would be wonderful. You can use social media to find training or job opportunities. Uh, the, you can watch news feeds to discover new workshops or classes, follow groups to find free or low-cost training sessions. That's how I initially got started in social media. I saw a free class on social media training. Use forums to answer questions or research resources. One group on LinkedIn I use as a help desk. Job opportunities. Watch for job postings in groups and forums. And we're going to look at the next few slides to show you exactly how to use each different platform for your job search. First of all, we have blogging. Blog is actually short for web blog. You use a blog to express your opinion, and to share subject matter expertise. So it's very good to have a blog in your industry, a topic in your industry. So what you want to do is you want to create a blog on a site like Blogger or Tumblr. And Blogger is associated with the Google products, so Blogger might be a better choice if you are looking for search results. Create a brand by using your same image on all of your social media platforms. Then you want to make sure that the About section is filled out with career keywords. Add links to all of your other social media accounts. And if it is possible to add a static page on your blog, make sure that you include your resume information or a PDF copy of your resume. When you're writing, you want to make sure that you're writing articles that express your opinion on career-related subjects. So if you're in sales, you may want to write about a sales tactic that you just learned about. You might want to talk about customer service opportunities or something that you found in accounting that you want to show somebody how to do. Uh, write about new ideas. How would you improve upon a standard practice in your industry? And then, when you're reading other people's blog items, blog articles, express your opinion about those articles, but make sure that you give that other writer full credit. Feature other people. Write about best practices in your industry and while doing research in advance of an interview. Remember to always stay positive. That will always help your chances if you're looking for employment. Schedule writing time in your calendar so that you can post consistently. When you're first starting out, it's best to write it in your calendar once a week, write a blog article. Maybe if you have a lot of 
free time, you can write more than one a week. But at minimum, you want to write one at least twice a month. Otherwise, it really doesn't do much good. Then when you're done, pin or, sw uh, or use the other social media to share your blog content. Uh, blog content, it's a great way to build your, your system. And remember to search industry blogs and share articles or write comments with a link back to your blog. But don't just add the link to your blog because that's considered spamming. Our next topic is Facebook. Facebook is the largest social media network. It has over 1.3 billion users these days. The average Facebook user spends 20 minutes per day on the site. So how can we use this to our advantage in the job search? You want to update the About section in your, in your account with your work history. Make sure that your Facebook icon is a professional image. Add professional skills to your profile. I'm, in our little mini videos, I show you how to do all of these things and where to do it. Verify your security settings to make sure that your private things are private. And make sure that your friends aren't tagging you on images that you don't get to approve first. When you're doing your status updates, include some things about your job search. When you're at a company, check in for the interview. At tag the company in a post so that it helps bring attention to that company. Follow companies for which you want to work and share their company updates. Tag companies that you follow in your posts and tag connections that are in your network. Use your network, your Facebook network, to reach out to a hiring manager. They're going to try to do the same thing by checking on you. There's a couple of apps in Facebook. Uh, one of them is Be Known, that is a monster tool that helps you find the jobs and the people in your network that are on Facebook. There are other groups in Facebook that you can join. There's a real estate group that I know of. I'm sure there is a computer of any kind of group on Facebook. But participate. They'll give you additional resources that you can use. And then there's another little tool on Facebook called ads. You can target ads by keyword and demographics. And one story that I heard was that a woman actually targeted the fashion district, the top five fashion houses in New York, and spent $150, directed the ad directly to nine fashion houses, had interviews with seven, and got job offers by three of them. And she ended up working for one of those companies. A brand page is uh, the question from our chat pod here it says, I have a personal Facebook page, but normally don't link it to my other social media sites. Should I create a brand page for myself? Brand pages are really more for businesses that have like a business email address. If you use your personal page as a personal brand page, there are celebrities that work just out of their personal Facebook page. So you can just shift your direction on your personal Facebook page for a period of time where you become more business-like instead of the personal relationships that you've already developed on Facebook. So does that answer your question? If you want to just type yes or no in the chat pod, that would be great. While we're waiting for that answer, we're going to move on to our next topic, and it's Google+. Google Plus is very similar to Facebook in terms of how you connect to people and how you post on Google Plus. It's associated with the largest search engine on the Internet. We can really use this to our advantage on, on our job search. You want to make sure that you sign up for a, Google, a Gmail account, and when you do that, it automatically gives you a Google Plus account. You want to make regular status updates, just like you do on Facebook. And then you use the same image for your icon as you do on your other social media accounts. 
claim a custom URL. It would be plus.google.com and then your name with a plus symbol in front of it. Add links to your other social me media platforms or any of your uh, portfolios or anything else that you might have on the Internet. Add professional skills to your profile about section. Add a cover image that reflects your personal professional personality. When you're doing your status updates, make sure that you're including notices, professional notices about your job search. Circle influential people in your industry. When you circle people in Google+, it's much like following people on Twitter. They don't have to reciprocate, but in many cases they may. Organize your contacts by circles. This is groups of people that have something to do with each other. So it may be a, a work group. It may be an industry type kind of group. It may be contacts that you've met while networking. Share company updates from the companies that you follow that you have added to your circles. Tag companies with a plus symbol in your posts. And then share quality content that you create on your blog. There are communities that you can join that are much like groups on Facebook. There are events that you can follow that might include some learning opportunities. And then there are Hangouts on Google+. Hangout is a video chat opportunity that you can use, and you can have up to 10 people on a video at one time. You may want to even invest in the time to start an industry job club that you can use a Hangout for. We have a note in the chat pod from people about the presentation. So if you did join us late, the handout that we are covering right now is in the pod between the chat pod and the closed captioning pod. Let's move on now to our next platform, and that's our Illinois Virtual Job Club Network. Many of you said that you'd use LinkedIn. Let's do a show by a raise of hand with a little man at the top of the screen of how many of you on this call use LinkedIn. All right, it looks like we've got at least half of the crowd that use LinkedIn for their job search. Well, on LinkedIn, we have a, an Illinois Virtual Job Club Network. And that is a group on LinkedIn where we use the opportunity to discuss job search topics, provide event opportunities, and share promotional opportunities. And others can share information about job postings. First thing you have to do is you have to have a LinkedIn profile. Then you're going to go and search for the Illinois Virtual Job Club Network or click on the link that Chelsea just put in the chat pod for you. Request to join the group. And if you are a job seeker in Illinois, we will automatically approve you. When you are looking at the Virtual Job Club Network, there is a discussion tab. Take a look at all of the discussions. And if you need to know, uh, I'm sorry, not if you need to, if you know the answer, make sure that you comment on the current discussions. You can also share those discussions in other job search groups to which you belong. Under the promotion items, under the promotions tab are things like resume reviews and job club meetings and different events or promotional opportunities that people share in the group. And then under the jobs tab, there are job postings. And if you don't see something that's actually listed under the job postings, look under the job discussion tab to look for, uh, for links that people have posted to the group. You can also review the Members tab. You can find up to 250 connections on, in the group. And you might be able to find a brand new connection that could help you in your job search. You can also search by specific discussions 
uh, by keyword and use that group search tab. Remember to share information in the job club, answer questions for which you know the answers, and reach out to other members. Let's pull up a poll question right now. How often do you post about your industry on your social media accounts? All right, we've got some answers going on. And it looks like many of you have never thought about that. It's something to consider. Remembering that staying up to date in your industry is important to employers and recruiters to make sure that you know what's happening in your industry so that they're know they know that you're staying up to date. Let's hide this poll. Move on to our next topic, which is actually LinkedIn. LinkedIn is known as the professional social media platform. It's used by job seekers and businesses as their number one go-to social media platform. You can maintain an online resume, and you can compile professional contacts. Job seekers that have a completed profile with industry-related keywords in the right spots will appear in search results created by those recruiters and human resource leaders. Here's a couple of tips. There are three areas that are used by the search algorithms in LinkedIn. You want to make sure that you fill out those areas with keywords, and those areas include your headline, the skills and expertise, and your summary. When you are using LinkedIn, it is best to do an update, an actual status update, three to five times per week to make sure that your personal brand is kept in plain sight. Here's a little marketing tip. It takes five to seven times for somebody to see your name before they remember that they've even seen it. It can take as many as 21 times for somebody to see your name before they'll take action. So the more frequently you post on LinkedIn, the more likely it is that somebody will see your post and remember your name. When you connect with someone, you need to make sure that you connect with everybody that you meet. Ask them if they have a LinkedIn profile, search for them after you've met them, and then invite them to connect. But just remember to connect with them by personalizing your invitation. Don't just send out those generic invitations. Whenever I teach my class on LinkedIn, I always m make everybody pledge to me that they will not send out the generic invitations anymore. We have a question from the audience. It says, how many groups are optimum? I have lessened the amount of groups I've joined so that my participation score would be higher. Is this a good idea? Well, it depends on the number of industry-related groups to which you belong. If you have limited time, you could limit the number of groups that you belong to. My suggestion to people is they can join up to 50 groups, but I always suggest 10 to 20 industry-related groups and then 10 to 20 local-type kind of groups at minimum, just because you never know who's going to be in what group so you can join a number of groups. And then I always leave a few loose groups so that if I need to join a specific group for a specific thing, I have some space. You also want to follow companies. Share their posts and watch their company posts for job openings. Uh, we have an, another question from the audience about after my summary and experience are updated, what types of status updates do I post and where? Um, on your home page is where you post those status updates, right at the top of your home page. And then the type of status updates that you would post are things that you're doing or reading. For example, an article on something related to your industry that you find. Share it and say, I found, picked up a couple of tips. Or this is a great article for someone in X industry. 
share those, and that makes your name appear. Whenever you connect to someone, that makes your name appear. Whenever you participate in a group discussion, that makes your name appear. So just make sure that you are working LinkedIn to your advantage. When you're searching for jobs on LinkedIn, you want to search by industry and then use the advanced options to find connections at that company that might be able to help you in your goal of obtaining that job. Let's move on to the next platform, which is Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is to women as fantasy football is to men, but you can also use it for your job search. It's the online version of a bulletin board that you would have hung on your wall when you were a kid if you're like as old as I am. It's a place where you can store important articles, images, videos. It's a great storage spot for career-related items to help your job search. Use your, the same profile image as you use on your other social media platforms. It's a, it's a great way to continue your brand. When you fill out the About description, make sure that you include a couple of keywords. The About section on Pinterest is much smaller than some of the other platforms, but throw in a couple of those keywords. Make sure that you connect it to your Twitter account so that if you are posting industry-related items, it will also tweet. And then create a career and career boards and a set of personal boards so that people can find out a little bit more about you personally, but they can also find things related to your career. So here's the tips that you can do with your updates. Pin your resume or pin your video resume. Create a board that represents the different parts of your resume and share your resume pins on your other social media. Pin links to images in blog posts that you write. So if you created that blogger blog, always include an image and then pin that image to your pin board. Create boards that show your skills. If you're a graphic designer or a photographer, you can have different boards that show the different items that you've created. Maybe you're an accountant and you've created some beautiful charts. Pin those. Are you in metalworking, or maybe you've created a machine, a beautiful machine? Take pictures, pin them. Follow your industry experts, pin their items. Investigate other companies, pin their items. Comment on their pins. It all, all of those people check the engagement that they get, and they pay attention to who is pinning and sharing their posts. Follow career sites to get tips on social media. Illinois WorkNet posts a lot of items, and we always pin our stuff. When you're searching, search for help items or research company information. Companies will tend to post some things that help them share information about their corporate culture. Stay up to date on industry information by using research for pins. Let's move on to, oh, I'm sorry, we have a question from Chelsea. Uh, can users pin their resume type items and continue to post personal items, or should they have more than one account? My thought is that you have one account and you create different boards so that you've got boards related to your personal as well as a board or boards related to your work. Let's move on to the next platform, which is Twitter. Twitter is 140 characters at a time. How can you use that to your advantage? Well, again, you're going to create a profile image that's the same as you've used on all of your other social media platforms. Fill in the 160 character about section with career keywords and use a header image to demonstrate some of your skills. I created a sample account for our mini videos and I created an account for a woman who is a baker. 
so I created a header image that had all sorts of baked goods in it. If you connect Facebook to Twitter, you can share your Facebook posts to Twitter in one shot. Include notices about your job search. Hey, just had an interview at such and such a company. Use the at symbol to tag that company. Find out what their Twitter handle is. Follow companies for which you want to work. Use hashtags that the companies use to join in a conversation with representatives of that company. Use at tags to message companies that do not follow you back. And then make sure that you retweet messages from companies you follow. Tag companies that you follow in your post by using that at symbol. When you search, use a hashtag for the search. May, it may be pound jobs. It may be pound uh, job openings. It may be an industry-related tag like pound manufacturing jobs. There's another opportunity that you can participate in tweet chats. They're virtual conversations that happen using the Twitter platform. This will help you stay current in your industry. There's an entire schedule of tweet chats that you can find online and in our little mini guides. And remember, hashtags will get you the search results that you are looking for. YouTube. YouTube, remember from the video, is the second most searched tool on the Internet, and it's not even a search engine. How many of you, let's do a show of hands, how many of you go to YouTube when you're looking for how to do something? Raise your hand with the little man at the top of the screen. I do it all the time myself. Looks like at least half of our audience does that. So when you are using YouTube, you want to make sure that you create a YouTube channel through your Gmail account. Use the same profile image for your icon as you did on all of the other ones. That makes your brand stronger. So if somebody sees your image, they may recognize it from your other platforms. Fill in the About section of your description with your career keywords. Does that sound familiar? When you're updating, you want to share videos that you find on YouTube on your other social media. Try to make sure that they're industry-related on occasion. Create a channel to store all of your recordings. Then create playlists so that your similar videos are all grouped together. The other thing that you can do is create a video resume. And if you have not already investigated it, you can use the Illinois Resume Builder tool to create a video resume. And Chelsea, if you want to throw that link up on the screen for us, that would be great too. Now, if you have the ability to use a screen capture tool, there are several available. You can create videos that are how-tos for what you do in your industry. With smartphones these days, <coughs> excuse me, you can use your smartphones to record action videos that you can post. Use those related to your industry. And remember, when you search by tag, industry, or keyword for informational items or how-to videos, it will help you stay up to date on your industry topics. Moving on to our next slide, we've covered all of the platforms. But now what? Make sure that you share on a regular basis, sharing industry-related items. Participate in groups and in conversations. Try to engage with others on the different social media platforms. Be consistent. 
if you start a blog or if you start posting, be consistent. Continue doing it on a regular basis so that you can build your presence. How many of you, let's do a show of hands, how many of you have done a Google search or a Yahoo or Bing search on your name? All right, we're going to clear out the search results here. Or I'm sorry, we're going to clear out the hands, raise your hands. And now what I want to do, when you searched your name, raise your hand, how many of you saw your name show up in the top five positions on the search results? Okay, not quite as many hands went up there. If you start using the social media on a regular basis and using it in the way that I've described here, your name should show up at the top of a Google search result. It's great if you can get that to happen because many recruiters and business people search your name when they're thinking about hiring you. And you want all of that information to be positive at the top of the list. We have a question from the audience. It says, do you have a schedule you follow so that managing all of your social media sites is manageable? I use Hootsuite, but could be a lot better. I use Hootsuite as well, but I manage social media for a number of my clients. And so one of the things that you have to do is just remember to schedule things if you know that you're going to be busy. And if you can, check in first thing in the morning, midday, somewhere around lunchtime, and then early evening or right after work. That will help you stay on top of your social media platforms. Three times a day is about it, and that's that's probably as much as you would need to do. Does that answer your question? One of the things that you can do is find news in, in, in your industry. You want to sign up for e-newsletters from trade organizations. Follow them on social media as well. Set up Google alerts for keywords in your industry. So for example, if you are in construction, you may want to set up a Google alert for construction in Chicago or snowfall if you happen to be in the snow plowing industry. Follow companies and organizations on social media. Share information that companies post. Remember to use the at symbol to tag a company on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Use the plus symbol in front of a company name on Google+. When you at tag a company, it draws attention. Conferences or trade shows. How many of you, let's do a show of hands, how many of you go to conferences or trade shows that are related to your industry? Okay, we've got some people that do that. When you're doing that, share updates about the event on social media from the conference. Maybe you are in a, a, a breakout session and the speaker has put up on the screen what their, uh, what their handle is for Twitter. Get on your phone and tweet, or get on your tablet if you have one and tweet. In your post, make sure that you're using that at symbol so that you can tag the speakers. And then if you take any images, post those. Uh, you can use, uh, uh, you can use uh, Instagram and connect it so that it goes to Facebook. And then if Facebook is connected to Twitter, it does three for the price of one. Collect business cards from other attendees or vendors, and remember to invite them to connect on LinkedIn. What are you going to do? You're going to personalize that invitation. Follow them 
and their companies on all of the social media platforms. Find a mentor. Use social media to engage with that mentor in industry discussions. There might be somebody in a group that seems to be a leader in that group. Invite them to connect. Say that you like what they, you followed and seen them write in the group. And invite them to connect so that you can stay closer in contact with them. And then maybe after they connect with you, you can engage them as your mentor. Find guidance by those experts that we just talked about in the group and research experts on LinkedIn. Maybe there's somebody that's a, a, an industry leader and you might want to connect with them. Network. Social media is all about network all the time. Many people tell me that they only like to connect with people that they have met. And if you don't get out and meet people, you don't have the opportunity to expand your network. My mantra when I teach LinkedIn is it's not about who you know, it's about who they know. Your name may come up and somebody says, oh, I got a guy or I got a girl. And then your name gets shared, but they don't know you unless they've met you somewhere in a network. When you're looking for jobs or employees, contact your network. Invite everyone you meet to connect on LinkedIn. Personalize your invitations. Follow others on all social media. Blogs or forums. We talked about this in the blogging section. You want to make sure that you create your own blog to share your expertise. Review articles in your industry. Comment on them. Share your opinion on other people's articles. And remember to share articles on industry topics on your social media. When you join a forum, you can answer questions to share your expertise. And share articles again that you find and ask questions to gain knowledge. You cannot find all of the answers to everything, so why not go to the experts to get their knowledge? Social media in your job search. Make sure that you follow these tips from this presentation to help you build your personal brand. Here they go. Create a presence on social media platforms. Find training or job opportunities. Find and follow industry news and organizations. Use social media to broadcast and connect during trade shows or conferences. Find mentors on social media and build a relationship. Network using your new social media presence. And last but not least, share your expertise on blogs and forums. We have a multitude of resources on our Illinois WorkNet website. We've got a social media guide. We've got a number of mini videos. We've got handouts that you can use. So make sure that you go to our, our link and if Chelsea can slide that into the chat pod for us, you can check out all of these tools and resources in individual format for yourself. Pick the platform that's best for you. And then we also invite you to participate in our social media. And here are all of the links that you can follow us. We'd like to thank the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity for sponsoring us and sharing uh, the time that we use to help you guys. Now, I'm going to pull out this last poll question. So I'm not, I, I know a lot about social media, but I don't know everything. So what are some of the tips that you've used for social media and your job search? Share it in the poll question that we've just put up here. I'm going to move this over a little bit so that you can still see our links. And if you did not already have a chance to download the handout from our session today, you can do that from the pod in the middle between the chat and the closed captioning pod. We will be posting this recording on our YouTube channel and on Illinois WorkNet. So, Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm going to 
uh, wait for just a moment before I end the recording to see if there are any other questions from the audience. Thank you for sharing your tips in our poll. And thank you to Tina, our closed captioner. Thanks to Chelsea, Lacey, and Natasha for helping on the webinar today. The uh, chat notes and closed captioning will be on the recording, Walter, so that when we get the recording posted, you will be able to see those there. And we'll get that up later this week. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Robert. We do have a session this afternoon for recruiting and hiring on, with social media. It's going to be very similar to our format today. So if you know any business owners that need some tips for using social media and recruiting, invite them to join the session this afternoon at 1.30. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Thalia. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Carla. Is it advantageous for job seekers to join session this afternoon? Uh, it's, it's geared for business owners, so I, I don't think job seekers would really gain that much more from having, if you attended this session, you would not really gain anything else. Or like Chelsea said, if you ever think you might own a business and hire some employees. All right, we have a couple of tips in the poll pod here. Keep aware of updates and new ways. Yes, stay up to date with what's going on. Use same photo and summary for all sites and use Hootsuite or TweetDeck to make posts manageable. That's a good tip. I, I like Hootsuite a lot. And you can have five accounts for free on Hootsuite. First and foremost, do it and stay on top of it. Yep, that's a good tip. <laughs> and one user wrote, I didn't have any tips until I sat in on this webinar. So thanks. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to close our recording for today's session so that we can get that up and posted for you to watch it again. Remember to go to Illinois WorkNet and find our social media guide page. We do have one more question. It says, are there any books on social media you would recommend? <sighs> If somebody has published a book on a how-to, use a specific platform, it's already out of date by the time it goes to print. But there are a number of, of online versions of things that you can use. One of them, and I'm going to type a couple of these in here, uh, is Mashable is a great resource. And then... Uh, Social Media Examiner is another resource. And I write a lot on my website, and we write a lot about social media on Illinois WorkNet as well. Oh, and Chelsea suggested the Daily Muse. That's a really good one for job search and social media as well. If anybody else has any other suggestions, you might want to type them in the chat pod. I'm going to end the recording now, but we will leave the chat and the, uh, the tips pod open. So if you want to stay and type there, you can.